Hey again guys and welcome back. Um, so today I went shopping at the Canadian Harbour Freight which is um, Princess Auto here in Canada and I got a couple things and I figured you guys would want to be around for me to unbox it. So first and foremost are some uh, T-handle um, you know like Allen keys. Basically, if you need tools, well, let's let's rephrase it. If you want tools and you're okay with waiting, you should always wait for these things to go on sale. At least that's the way it works at the Princess Auto. They will all eventually go on sale. And so these guys were only $7.50. Canadian, so that's what, like four dollars American for these T handles. Oh, that one did not go as well. Let's see if I can. Nah, lost cause. So, just a common thing here in uh, in my workshop. Ooh, these are full of schmoo. I'm going to have to clean these off a little bit. I tend to use a lot of uh, Allen bolts. So if I go into my stash here, I have these guys. And these guys are, I don't even know what size, 4 mil, I guess. Yeah, there we go. 4 millimeter hexes. I like... The, the hex drives, actually the, they're my second favorite drive. The Robertson, the square drive, is actually my favorite, but that's a kind of a pain in the butt for hardware. It's more for, you know, like building and stuff. So anyways, so I got these two and uh, they're numbered, they're punched. These holders are actually punched with the hex on them, so you can just slide these in and they will not spin around on you. They're just quick tools to, you know, install or remove hexes, and I'm always, always running after some Allen keys, and now I won't have to have these hex drivers. So especially for the price, wasn't a bad investment. You do want metric and you do want standard, especially if you buy stuff from China, because most of the stuff from China will be metric. However, um, they won't fit very well. So the standard usually gives you the, the SAE sort of gives you the, the half size in between. So yeah, so I got a whole bunch now. There's the sizes included in this one. So this is nice because the sticker shows you, you can have it mounted like this, has little mounting holes on the bottom have it mounted this way you can see the numbers or you can mount it on the wall and sort of see the numbers you can see the numbers that are missing I think I would probably cut some vinyls on the Cricut to make a better logo to that or a better scale to that there you go you can see it there and you can see it there so I think these things will make a good addition to the shop and especially for the price I mean you know, $7.50 seven per set, pretty cheap. Next up were these uh, quarter inch hose repair kits. I have an air compressor in my garage. If you're a uh, person who works on cars at all, you should probably have one too. But there's a little hose that goes from the tank to the um, shutoff switch to the regulator. And that hose on mine started leaking. So if that hose on yours starts leaking, you can either buy the OEM hose that is meant to go on it, or you can get these fittings, which is just basically a, uh, I think this is a 3 8 NPT. Not sure exactly what the, what the size of this is, but this, this is a tapered fitting. So usually it's used in all sorts of airlines, but basically you thread this in and as you thread it in, it gets tighter because it's a taper. So this one finishes in a barb and then they give you 
these hose clamps. So you can actually just use a scrap of hose. I mean, if you have airline that, um, that broke, you can just snip a section off and use that. But in my case, I actually destroyed the whole regulator assembly when I removed it and tried to remove a fitting. So um, I snapped it, it's just a whole cast piece. So if you wanna see me try to fix that, let me know in the comments below because I'm not sure, since it's really not electronics type content, I may not actually make a video on it or I may, may make it Patreon only. But if you guys wanna see me try to repair my regulator assembly with the use of um, glue and fiberglass, then let me know. Uh, otherwise, it's just going to be a either a Patreon video or maybe I'll make a second channel or something. But yeah, these guys were a buck ninety nine. You get these uh, two hose clamps, this uh, this um, you know barb to barb fitting, and this um, threaded to barb fitting. And I got two just in case because I might just want to go from one end to the other with uh, this barb or I might want to reuse the old connection and just use one barb but either way it was really cheap good to have on hand so I picked some up. Last one up is a Biggins. So this here is a full aluminum uh, power bar. These things are surprisingly expensive uh, over here in Canada. Um, these guys happen to go on sale, so if you're watching this video probably the few days after it's gone up, um, you can still get these. So these are at the Princess Auto again, this is their brand, but I mean, they, they don't make these, they just order them and they put their own label on it. But uh, yeah, every shop needs a power bar, and now my shop has a bunch because I bought two of these for my new workbench. I think I will give put put the tour out to the general public soon, but if you want to see it sooner rather than later, um, go check it out on my Patreon page. So this thing has a six foot cord. It's wall mountable, which is nice. I am going to wall mount this. The cord is nice and robust actually. I don't know what the gauge is. Let's see, it's uh, Ningbo Light Sun Electronics Co. Um, 2.08 square millimeters, 14 gauge. Actually, that's not bad. I see these uh, generic ones uh, for sale on like Amazon and um, Prime Cables and places like that. And they want, uh, they want more money than this on sale. And um, they're only 16 gauge or 18 gauge. And I don't think 16 or 18 is good for one with this many outlets. I think it's 10 outlet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, geez, 12 outlets. And my new workbench will have two of these. I have been curious though, I do want to kind of pull this apart and see what's on the inside. Simply because I'm not sure if these outlets are, so sometimes they're made by just running a single strip of brass down each side and uh, down the middle for the ground. And I would really like these outlets if they were twisted 180 degrees. So if it's point to point wired, then I could probably do that. Or sorry, 90 degrees rotated. Um, I don't really like the sideways plugs because when you have a like a um, power brick, it kind of gets in the way. I'm gonna open this up. Now I'm not worried about breaking this because Princess Auto has a fantastic return policy. I mean, even if you break it, they will take it back. I don't think I'm gonna break it to a point where it won't work. So I don't think I'll be taking advantage of that, but just know that um, that is available. So these are just self-tapped, just self-tapping screws into the aluminum extrusion. Whoa, that is nasty.
That's not aluminum, though. Oh, it's shavings from the plastic cover that's supposed to protect the aluminum. Oh, this edge is wicked sharp, too. I'm trying to look down the barrel here. They definitely got the smell, the offshore smell. So let me just open this side up. So yeah, $15 for these things. I actually was going to go buy a used one. And someone accepted my offer for $20 for a used one. Not not this exact one. It's a, It was a brand name one. And then he changed his mind. He didn't want to sell it to me for $20 anymore. Wanted 30 bucks. So I told him, you know, I'll wait. And I'm glad I did because two days later, this went on sale. This is actually the only reason I went to Princess Auto. Oh, okay. Some strain relief here. Wow, look. You can see the beefy cables here. Um, I think they're the strip type. I'm going to open this up here. This is the ground. Oh, this might actually be too much of a pain to remove. Well, we can see the construction in there. So this is a plastic sheet here. You know those things, pile of stuff keeps getting in the mail, plastic sheets. So there's a plastic sheet there protecting the metal work from the aluminum, or the wires from the aluminum. I can see that these wires here are soldered onto the switch. I feel like I should be able to remove this. Something's keeping it together. Because it seems like this whole bottom section should slide. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this whole bottom section should slide. Well, that doesn't sound right. Taking a look over here. Looks like it's just tensioned there. There's no screws. Yeah, it's just a... Uh, this plastic here pushes hard on this aluminum. There we go. All right. So yeah, you can tell here that this should come right out, except for the ground over there. But there's what I meant. There was those two um, brass strips with the uh, is that staking or soldering? No, this is uh, staked on and then soldered. It's not too bad, but it's not what I would say is heavy duty. Got your ground over here. And uh, yeah, these things are just, just sitting in there and you can see those brass strips. And in fact, here in between these two, the brass is opened up as if there's another spot for a plug there. So they could actually make these denser. They could double the amount of plugs uh, on this, I believe. But yeah, not a super high current device. It's nice that the, that the bottom has that plastic shielding. We'll see if I can pull one of these out just to give you an idea. Is this in frame? Yeah, it's close enough. If you're looking for perfection, you wouldn't be on this channel. So yeah, these little posts here, these guys here, just kind of space everything out and protect from metal to metal contact. And they put a plastic shield over on the uh, switch end here just to make sure that if those wires come loose, they're not going to go touch the aluminum. I like the fact that it fits very tightly too. It gives me a bit more confidence. I might go pick up some of these, but I don't think since my contract has ended at the college, I don't think I have that much money to spend. Okay, so here we go. So here's the brass 
for the ground. There's a little opening there. That little opening there where the ground pin goes in. And then you've got your um, live and neutral. This side would be live because I'm seeing the black wire would end up there. And this one's your neutral. So it's just really shaped sort of like making an opening like this where the pin will slide in. So that's pretty neat. You can even uh, even see you might be able to poke it in from this end. Yep, so it's the same the same thing. Pokes right in there. Very interesting. All right, let me put this back together and then we can outro this video. And this overwhelming pile of items make up today's tool haul video, I guess. Thanks again for watching and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters who are just the best people in the world. Thanks for watching.